Welcome back for another OG Show Live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for News. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, once again, the Bass Guy. Oh, brother. This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the pallet. Welcome back, back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur. Your host, Brad. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal. Hey, welcome back to Off the Water. Happy This is you here with Adventures of Outdoor Woman Podcast. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, go to eastport.info. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Breaking, breaking, breaking information. <laughs> this is Jimmy. We've already had one reel down this week, but I've got a bonus episode. Yeah, breaking news, right? Exclaimer! No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. We've already had one of those in the last few weeks. Um, but no, I told everybody we was going to get a bonus episode. Me and Dan missed last week, and I've been waiting for everything to be finalized and put out in the open before asking. Uh, Drew to come on and for everybody on YouTube you already see Drew but for anybody listening this is what this show is it's been the hottest topic in uh, one of the hot two hottest topics that's going on right now there's been tons and tons of controversy and false information and true information I mean there's just been information and there's been speculation and all this stuff and you know over here at Paddle and Finn we have no sides picked we're neutral. We're very open-minded. We all, what's really cool is we all have been talking about all this stuff in our group chat and we all have different opinions on everything. You know, it, it shows just how honest it is on our side, but what we wanted to do was, I mean, give one of the people that's in the topic right now a chance to tell their side of the story, tell the fact, tell what was done, if they appreciated it, if it sucked the whole shebang. So Drew Gregory is here. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm worn out, but I'm glad to have this finally pass me or part of it. You know, there's a lot of interviews to still do and things to talk about, but uh, glad to finally have the, the outcome, no matter how it you know turned out. Glad to finally have it pass so I can now share with the world. I, I stayed off social media for the last two weeks. Uh, had I the KBF, <laughs> KBF National Cha- Yeah, I had the KBF National Championship to deal with, plus all this other stuff. And I knew that people would jump to conclusions, you know, and, and, and probably speak without the facts. And I also knew that Bassmaster was doing the right thing, handling it all the right way. And that I just had to trust in the process, you know, right. and then let, let it happen. And, and we all want the correct outcome. Nobody wants a tournament to be incorrect, the results or whatever. We all want the, the, the correct outcome. And I believe that's what we, we obviously finally have here. But it just took a little time to get there. So it's yeah. almost, you know, it's, anyway, yeah, it's almost better that this happened really that way. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that it was, you know, all legitimate. No, no rules were broken. And um, the, the protest is, I tell you what, guys, if you ever wanted to get into kayak fishing, uh, uh, you know, quote unquote, professionally or, or bass fishing, you know, if you're successful, there's a lot more to this whole sport than fishing. There is this stuff, right? The interviews, the podcasts. There's all the pressure. There's the on stage talking. There's a lot of stuff. The the internet, you know, world's going to be talking about you, a buzz, and you better learn to have some thick skin and uh, be able to handle what people say, good or bad. Like I said, I haven't really read anything online, honestly. So, but I just know kind of a few people have said some things to me, and, and I don't even want to well, hear. You I, just kind of know how it is, man. Yeah, you know, I, we know, I know how people it is. are. And uh, I don't, yeah, I don't want to. And that's not hate, a name, a thing, everybody. naming. It's just like in any sport. Yeah anything yeah i mean like i saw one today with a rapper kevin gates talking about like it's kind of how you know you're doing good when you're the buzz and then you get all that heat so it's true it's it's yeah. it's just part of it and uh but yeah so I, i'm glad i'm glad that it's went the way it's went um right. i hope everybody's i mean it's kind of weird to say because this is kayak fishing i hope everybody's at peace of mind about it which i know that's not true but um <laughs> I feel like it's just the start of the buzz for other directions, but I do think that 
hopefully now it at least kind of clears your name of it and clear, clear your name. There's something that I kept hearing people use was like, mm-hmm. I hope they, they clear his name of this. He, he, it, he wasn't accused of cheating folks. Like mm-hmm. my man didn't go out there and like catch fish in a basket or go fish in like Pawpaw's right. pond. That's not what this was. And even though I know most folks, folks didn't think that it's just kind of how it came off is like, was he cheating? Well, uh, yeah. Was he cheating? Was he cheating? No, he wasn't cheating. He might have been out of bounds. Like that was yeah. what the investigation was. Right. It was on the heels of the walleye thing and all everything else that's happened in fishing, you know. Yeah, I feel past, like it the, probably wasn't good timing for yeah, sure. Yeah. a poche and lit powder you know. keg of bull crap for the fishing industry. That's what we said yeah. in our group chat. I was like, man, it's been a rough three weeks for fishing. <laughs> like <laughs> certainly has, man. No doubt about it. It was uh I think most people uh know me in the industry. I've been doing this a while and uh, but but there are people that just get in the the industry and they don't know me. So maybe, you know, they could have thought it was something intentional. And my, I mean, my goodness, I've won dude, I won three in a row, man. I'm I'm as shocked by that as anybody. So you got to raise an eyebrow. You know what I mean? A little bit like, wow, how in the world that guy just went three in a row? Um, and, you know, obviously winning the AOI. So I, I get it, man. And that's where I'm saying you got to have thick skin. You got to accept scrutiny and be able to prove sometimes in this situation in particular. Sometimes you even have to be able to prove uh, any challenges or any potential, any questions a tournament director may have, which I get asked, uh, you know, and any winner should, just like any winner, any of the top placing anglers should, where'd you launch? You know, what about, you know, whatever, any questions that, you know, did you ever get out of your kayak? What, you know, do you have any proof of this? Fortunately for me, I do film every tournament, which is, um, you know, it's good uh, because I can show things, you know what I mean? And, right. and kind of prove some things. So, yeah, it's it's been a crazy three, two, three weeks for fishing for sure, and I'm glad to clear the air here. I got nothing to hide, so I'm glad to clear the air. I just finally can talk about it all during during the process. <clears throat> so just so everyone knows, I won the tournament. I got protested. I was disqualified, and I'll explain why. And then I appealed, and I won the appeal against a, a three. Uh, there was a three. Bassmaster did such a great job. I just got to stop here and say that Lisa Talmadge. Chris Bowes uh, were incredible. Hank Weldon, I think, had a little bit uh, in the background helping them as well. But they did an amazing job, very professional. Um, and when there is an appeal, there's a three-person panel uh, that's basically like you're, you know, two anglers that are not in the tournament and one Bassmaster employee that has nothing to do with the tournament department of Bassmaster. And they listen, they see all the facts are presented and they make the determination sort of like a jury would, right? So they have nothing to gain. And then they just decide. And, um, you know, fortunately for me, I got a call within five, five, 10 minutes max. You know, it says within 24 hours, you'll get a verbal answer, whether, you know, you've won the appeal or you've lost it. I got a call, you know, five or 10 minutes later. And Lisa Talmadge was is cool. uh, awesome. She said that you were, you were cleared, you know, and she – she congratulated me on the hard work and effort I put into to get to those fish, find those fish. And uh, I, uh, I'll be honest, I broke down in tears, you know, on the phone with her, just tears of joy. Cause I felt like, Oh my God, this burden's off my shoulders. The oh, weight's yeah. been stress. lifted. Everyone can now at least know that, you know, this was a very thorough investigation, it, you know, and, and the facts were all laid out. And what's crazy is you can't get away with anything. If you think you're going to try to get away with anything, hopefully the, the positive we can take from this is, you're not going to get away with anything, whether it was intentional or unintentional, because unfortunately in today's world, our cell phones are tracking everything. You send a text message, you now have a timestamp on something. You, you have locations are being sent. Obviously I'm filming everything. So the dumbest thing, you know, anybody who's obviously intentionally trying to do something could ever do is film something. But, uh, but what's crazy is I, um, one of the things that, that, oh, well, I'll back up before I get more into the story. I'll just back up. That's what say, I was going to say. We, we've got a whole yeah, bunch of backing we got a whole, up. We're going to break, lot of backing break up. it all down. But, but um, the whole process I, was good. I just want to thank Bassmaster. For yeah, and that's bit, so. what I was going to touch real quick is that's the first fact that, you know, for everybody listening, here's your, here's your first. He was disqualified. Because a lot of folks yeah. didn't even realize that you had been actually, we knew right. it was up for protest. But no one had known that there had been a judgment put down right. until the little thing came out that your disqualification had been appealed and mm-hmm. changed. So there's your fact right there that they did disqualify you initially. Yep. 100%. And then you went through the appeal process. It was investigated even more because they have to investigate something to disqualify you. 
And then right. they basically the investigation of the appeal would be them viewing your evidence and then it was overturned. So right. that right there is a huge piece of information that a lot of not of people even knew because it wasn't really out there, which at the same time, I kind of understand that. Like you said, you took away from social media and didn't really talk about this. It's it's yeah. kind of like if you're in a lawsuit for something like you don't yeah. talk, your lawyer tells you to shut up until it's done, you know? Yep. So, you know, that's that's for anybody that doesn't understand why Drew wasn't over here defending himself or, you know, getting into yep. all the social media buzz. It's just not the right time. You know, and and I, again, I'm not defending Drew, but I just understood that it was like, well, right. he's not going to run his mouth about anything until the answer comes out. If they disqualify him and it's set, I'm sure you if like if you had lost your appeal, I'm sure you'd have been the first person to tell everybody. Be like, 100%. I was disqualified. This is why this, they're correct. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but we'll, we'll take a huge step back. And just because you hadn't got to talk about it, do us a just a, a, a kind of a quick. Like, tell me about your tournament. And so it was the Bassmaster, this last Bassmaster event of the year was on Pickwick. And it was one of the, they had a few this year that were a two-day tournament. So this was the one of them. So just just tell us about your tournament day. Mm -hmm. And so obviously going into this, none of this buzz is even in your mind. You're trying right. to lock up AOI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So t tell us about that. So, yeah, I, I just, you know, I know that... I know that Shad move up creeks in the fall, you know, and depending on which lake you're on, what time of the year, it all changes where they'll be. You know, they might be in the back of the, the creek arm of that, you know, of the lake. They might be in the mouth of it. They might be all the way up. Some of them might be all the way up in the true creek creek, you know. Right. And uh, which is the beauty of kayak fishing in this sport that we can take these little boats and put them in and fish all of the above water, offshore, on the bank in the main lake up the creeks, up the rivers, in backwater, oxbows, all this. And so, but I know that the shad move up there, uh, you know, like, like other people do. And there's a uh, several large tributaries on Pickwick. So I knew I was going to target, you know, one of those, uh, thinking there might be some bigger fish, you know, in some of those larger tributaries. And so that's what I did on, uh, and just so everyone knows, I'll be up front. You know, I, I, I don't like giving away every like, little secret and tip and trick. And, and I'm going to do some virtual lessons. I think I've mentioned that on some podcasts this winter for folks. And I've done several of those in the past, but I'm going to open it up where it's more like a classroom style where there might be like five people online talking like you and I are now, and I'll be able to show them maps and, and help them understand and learn some stuff. But I, I really understood that, that the fish uh, in the back of these creeks could be, you know, harder for some, some people to, get to because i have a little small kayak you know my, my crescent surely is small so i don't want to, but i don't want to give up like every little secret and tip but i do fish out of bounds which is not against the rule in pre-fishing so i know some people have mentioned they maybe have saw me before like fishing out of bounds but i know what's in bounds what's not or sometimes i don't know but i'm looking to see if there's fish there first and then i'm going to figure out if it's all connected and if it is in bounds so there's a little tip for you guys. If you don't want to be, burn up, you know, beat up fish that are uh, in, a, in a small body of water, you know, because you need to make these fish last for two days. And if you're going to fish a very small tributary and you hammer it on pre-fishing, there's a good chance it's not going to last for two days. But if you hammer it above an obstruction that's impassable or whatever, uh, you know, a, a little spillway dam or something that would deem it out of bounds for the tournament, okay, then it doesn't matter because it's out of bounds and you're just learning how to catch the fish in that yeah. learning how they're set up yeah. beating on fish that aren't even in bounds. There's nothing illegal or wrong with that. It's it's, I thought, I think it's a smart move. It's, it's definitely a more of a, of a little bit of a, I don't know what the word is, man. I just have enough experience that I feel confident enough to go and do that and not have to catch the actual fish that, that are in bounds. You know, I, I almost feel like I could go blind, which is actually kind of what I did at, it's hundred percent what I did on the KBF national championship for three straight days, blind, never fished any of those, the water before uh, three different creeks and did pretty good. So I'm, I'm confident in, you know, my, with my experience in fishing rivers and creeks to do that. So that's just a little tip. If anybody ever sees somebody else fishing out of bounds, it certainly sh should potentially raise an eyebrow. It doesn't hurt to, to mention it to the tournament director because maybe they don't know it's out of bounds. There's no problem with that. That's where, you know, all that protest stuff. I don't have a problem with anything that, that happened in this whole situation because it, you know, you, we as anglers are the only ones that are the checks and balances. Right. So yeah. 
that hold each other no accountable. Problem. So that is, I went way, way up, you know, some of the trips to really determine, you know, are there any good size fish, you know, way up here. And then once I found some 17 and then I saw in the water, it was clear. I saw like a school of five or six and there was a couple of 15, 16s and a couple that were like 18, 17, 18 inches. So I don't have to catch, I don't have to go and catch these fish. I'm seeing them. I'm not going to beat them up in this. And then now if that's on, um, uh, that's on the first day pre-fishing Wednesday. So now Jimmy, I know, okay, these are AOI winning fish. I don't know if they're going to win the tournament, but my goodness, some 16, 17, 18 inch fish that could almost, cause I had a pretty good, people don't know this, but I, I think the guys that uh, were in the hunt for AOI, everyone kind of knew we talked about it, that I, it was really, uh, I was the only one that really controlled my own destiny uh, because I had an event short, right? Yes. I was one event short. So technically it showed me maybe 10th or 11th place, but right. I actually, was kind of in the driver's seat because uh, I had a, I had two firsts and a seventh. So some other folks, their fourth event was 18th or 20 something, you know? So as long as I didn't really blow this, it was kind of mine to lose. And so when I see these fish, I'm thinking, dude, these are AOI winning fish. That's all I want, man. That's all I want is just a good finish. Get the AOI. I wasn't even thinking about winning this tournament. That was like the last thing on my mind. And I went to a couple different tributaries and, and found fish that I thought could have, could have got the AOI done. So I, so then I've got a whole day, Thursday, second day of pre-fishing to determine and figure out, are these fish now legal uh, for the tournament? Because are they accessible from the main lake? Mm -hmm. So I, I was able to paddle through the entire section and cleared it. And, you know, without getting out of my kayak and I knew, you know, that it was clear, there was a path for me and my skill, obviously um, that's, that's, you know, the rules say must be accessible from the main lake. And uh, by whose determination? Obviously, us. So I went and made sure it was clear and determined that it was. And I and I could 100% do it, no problem. And uh, so I uh, ended up not even fishing on the final day. And by the way, it was very important. This is, this is going to come into play later in the story. A fellow com competitor and angler in the tournament um, picked me up at where I took out that day and then brought me back to my truck. So he obviously... And he had no problem telling him, you know, where I was fishing and whatnot. And he had no problem, you know, um, verifying and corroborating that. And, of course, we have text messages, you know, proof. That's what I'm saying about technology. You can't get away with anything, but you also can prove things because it's always tracking us, what we're doing. Right. So I have the pen <clears throat> sent to him. Hey, and the all text messages pick me up here. Okay. So this clears up that I made sure I went through that entire section and it was free flowing from there to the lake, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's big and wide now, trot lines, boat traffic, other competitors actually had already done that, that last little section as well and confirmed hundred percent it's free, it's clear. And uh, so no problems there. I, I cleared it, you know, to, to the main lake, just like the rule, you know, it stated. So anyway, that's what I did. Uh, Friday didn't do any pre-fishing, just geared up man. just, just rested, relaxed and said, I just want to win that AOI. That's all I want. I knew that would be special to, to be the first Bassmaster AOI. And, you know, it was very special to be, to be the very first Hobie AOI. You know, that was, I was like, man, how incredible would that be? You know, after a tough season last year, I didn't win any tournaments. Um, and I was in the hunt for some AOIs and had motor problems for KBF and Hobie. Of course, my, my daughter came six weeks early and uh, didn't get a chance to defend that title and uh, was sitting in second place. So I was kind of bummed about that, but obviously wouldn't trade it for the world, you know, for that sweet little girl. But this year, man, I just thought this is my goal. This is going to be so special. So that's all I wanted to do Friday. Like I said, chilled, relaxed, got geared up, tied everything up. And, uh, and then Saturday. So I'll keep going to the tournament if you want. First day yeah. of the tournament, unless you yeah, got go a question it. or anything to stop me here. I'll take a sip. No, no, no. I, I think it's uh pretty, pretty straightforward. You, yeah. you, oh. you knew what you were going to have to do and you didn't go beat up on your fish Friday. Yes. And I did. I, I could not resist. I will be honest about this. I could not resist bringing one rod with me on when I cleared that entire section for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to see, um, like I said, I haven't really caught anything in pre-fishing. I haven't been in the boat. Just, just saw some and made some casts from the bank in some areas uh, that were inbounds and, and later were too far up that would have been out of bounds. But I brought a rod and I did catch like an 18 on that entire trip down. And I was like, 
or no, I caught like a 17 and 18. I was like, I got to stop. I got to freak so hard. I got to stop. <laughs> so it was very difficult, but I did bring one rod. Um, but anyway, the, um, the tournament day came, right? And I go there and right off the bat in the dark, it's like three minutes past lines in. I mean, it's super dark, man. My GoPro, you can't, oh, by the way, I did film my way going down that day as well. I didn't film every single thing. When you're paddling a 12 mile section, you don't just, you know, just leaving the GoPro running, just paddling it. Cause obviously you're not required to film your pre-fishing and you're not required to film at all, but I did film uh, a good portion of it. And, uh, and I, I'm thankful I did some of the stuff I did film was some of the, the obstacles and some of the, the harder things to kind of like find a way to like kind of sneak, you know, under or around and stuff like that. So I had footage from the pre-fishing tournament day. I, um, catch that one big fish in the morning, six thirty three a big one, 18, probably 17, something, almost 18. I can't remember. And I was like, man, this is awesome. This is going to be a good day. This is exactly what I thought was going to be in here. I, you know, and then I keep moving down, you know, whatever, catch, another nice one another in the 18 inch range. I got a couple of solid ones catching some small ones in between, of course, because I knew that I, I think I could just get a limit here for two days for sure. And I, as long as I got a decent limit for two days, I thought I could get the AOI. Yeah. But then after catching like a second 18, I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is like amazing. There's, there's some pretty nice fish that have kind of migrated up here, you know, with these shad. And then I catch a, then I catch one that's like 20 and he wakes out and, and like, I want to say 10 inches of water, 10, 12 inches of water wakes out and smashes my top water in like 10 inches of water. Cause I see him coming right off the bank under like a little bit of a trash mat, you know, in the fall when the leaves yeah. start to, and, and you could see he was, he was just kind of hiding right underneath there by a little small stick that had kind of caused all that stuff to pile up. And, uh, you know, my GoPro footage, which I, eventually I'll share a lot of this stuff. Uh, obviously I'm going to get around to it, but I'm literally like, Oh my Lord, that's, that's at least like a 19 that gets closer. I'm like, that might be a 20. This might be a 20 <laughs> and it's barely, barely hooked. And he's jumping and it's just very nerve wracking fight. Cause I know what, what this fish could mean. I get him in. I don't know how he got hooked to my AFCO gloves and treble hooks. And I just kind of just slopped them all over in the boat. And, um, <laughs> cause I don't use a net. I, I go super light when I fish like this, I go really, really light. I don't really use a net. I feel like I've lost as many fish with a net as without. So I just, so used to grabbing it with my hands all my life. I just do it that way. But anyway, it's 20. So now I got a couple 18s and a 20 and I'm like, wow, I've got a stringer going here. And then, and I don't know what's going to happen on the main lake. I, I thought mid nineties was going to be what, what was going to happen because that's what happened at the Hobie event. The Guillermo won last year. Right. And so I'm thinking I need this mid nineties. Right. So, and you might be able to pull up what I had on day one, but anyway, yeah, I've was got it, right it was here. 90 something like 94 or something. Yeah, 94 and, not, 94 and a half. And the fish okay. you're talking about was actually a uh, 20 and a quarter. 20 and a quarter but and i'm gonna pull it up right here 20 and a quarter i, I mean whatever i had it i had it 20 and a half but they they didn't seem to like that photo so i had to send it a new one and i had lots of other ones that probably could have proved it was 20 and a half but you know <laughs> i just wanted to make sure i submitted the one that was like all right fine 20 and a quarter if that's you know i just don't want to get half inch deduction down to 20 i mean i mean i mean to be to be fair it didn't matter. <laughs> did not matter. But at the time, you as a competitor, you don't know. You think you need every single quarter of an inch, and you know you have that photo. But the because I've seen it matter before when I should have like sent more in and, and worked with the tournament director, you know, because that's perfectly fine. They don't mind, you know, you doing that. If you have a picture that really shows it with the mouth closed, touching, they want you to get as much out of your fish as it really is too. So right, they're not trying to like, and you're not trying to do anything, you know, you know, whatever, like deceptive. You're just trying to get. The, you know, we all do it. The right photo that proves it. The photo that absolutely proves it with the mouth closed. But they 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 move. But once you you know take your hand off of them or pull up for a picture, they're always squirming a little bit. That kind of you know loses that last quarter of an inch. But anyway, I uh, so then I go down and catch like another couple that were in that 18 inch range. Uh, uh, one of them hits a Z-man uh, goat toads when I'm like I'm reeling it. So I I use a weighted hook to get a little bit better casting. Plus the Z-man is buoyant. So with your rod up. I think i'm using the uh the double hook the double frog hook from berkeley and with the rod up i can get on the surface but a lot of times i like to fish that that frog just under the surface yeah. or even slow roll lower because people just think frog they think surface it's got to be the surface but frogs swim under the water too you know you see them jump in the water they're under the water swimming around so we we kind of lose the fact that the frog can be an underwater retrieve as well so, you know, that just a, just a quick one on that for, yeah. for that point. Uh, something I learned uh, not too long ago is 
looking at the rules of the Spro Frog tournament, it mm -hmm. talks about it has to be a hollow body floating frog. And I, I would laugh to a guy and was like, well, it's funny they mentioned that. And he was like, well, guys were filling them full of tungsten weights and fishing them on the bottom. And that tournament's supposed to be an all top. But just him saying that, I was like, ah, good point. <laughs> They do go down. They do go down and swim, <laughs> swim down. You see them jump in the water off the bank. Their their legs are kicking. So anyway, um, that's how I fished it, and it was kind of funny because on my GoPro footage, I I can see I'm like winding. I think I had like stopped my wind to itch or pick up my paddle or something, and I it's just right there in front of my kayak. And when I stopped it, it killed it, and it just go, went down like that. And I saw this like big 18 inch Alabama bass. You know we. Some people still call them spotted bass, but they're Alabama bass. So Alabama spotted bass, whatever you want to call it. The ones that get big, the ones you want comes up and just goes whoop, and then just turns right back down with it and just ate it. And I said, Oh my Lord. And I went down and just hammered her. And <laughs> then, uh, it was pretty amazing. And then, um, ended up, uh, realizing later that that rod was a medium. I thought I'd title on a medium heavy. It was a medium. <laughs> and now, now it makes sense to me when I would go back and I watch that footage. It's so funny. Cause it's like, such a bow in that rod so much more than it should have been i mean you, you certainly get away it's, with it's one of those not, those good pictures for like that you know, hashtag yes. pro staff where it's just like yeah it was over. a good one it's just <laughs> doubled over and it's a white you know 13 fishing fate version three white rod just doubled over seven foot three uh anyway but that was a, a good one i caught another one on a um uh, one I was throwing a chopo on this other fish and it got caught in a leaf this is my last fifth fish that really mattered got caught in a leaf and uh and it's kind of cool in the gopro it's like trying to eat it but it's not chopping right and it's still trying to like get it and i'm like dang it and i just kind of you know pulled it back and whatever around it in real quick and then threw uh, a jig i grabbed a jig and just tossed it back behind me because i was kind of drifting by i'm kind of looking like this being still as i could just it was a z-man cross size power finesse jig and um i'm just kind of like come on dude like there's no way this fish is gonna eat it surely <laughs> sees me and all of a sudden yeah it loads up it it dumped it and i was like oh, same thing with the frog like oh my goodness it just ate i couldn't believe it did and i hammered it and then just boat flipped it right in that so now i got like basically five over 18 inches and i'm like okay this was not expected but uh i'm not complaining that's for sure so does that well, well, everybody stay with us i know y'all want to get to the really juicy stuff we're getting there but i wanted to hear about the tournament that's what we do on this show the juiciness and the the, the drama, yeah. as we'll say, that comes in a minute. So your mindset was, you know, I got to have a strong finish to seal down AOI. After your day one, smacking out 94 and a half, did you change that up in your mind? Like, okay, nope, time to go win this one? Or was it just kind of like, well, we'll just play it out? I mean, like, did you change any I, of your thought process? I, I did. I changed. The only thing I changed was after that, uh, I caught that fifth fish that was pretty big. I actually... The, the last of the section I was fishing, I took it real easy. Didn't I didn't really fish it. I kind of paddled out through it really and just didn't really hammer it very hard at all. Kind of, I mean, kind of I like caught, you hear the pros talk about practice. Yeah, managing the fish, yeah. yeah. So I did um, catch another, like, maybe a couple that were, like, 17-inch range, and I was like, dang it, man. Like, I, maybe I shouldn't <laughs> be fishing. Maybe I shouldn't be fishing at all. But this time I'm thinking, last year, that's what Guillermo had for two days, like 94-something. So I don't want to, like – just completely quit either, you know, right. and I have another spot. Like I told you, I never went to another spot that I could go to. I said, well, I can always go there the next day. But after seeing the results, once I see the leaderboard, I made a decision. I said, you know what? I did not beat that area up as much as I could have. I have to go back there. I can't not go back after putting up 94 and a half. I know I can get a limit. A limit probably seals the AOI. Once I get five, I mean, truth be told, I think Justin Largen or someone's like, dude, like one fish would have sealed the AOI, you know, like because the the folks that were in the the AOI hunt, you know, didn't have the like didn't have the best finishes for them. Typically, they came back really strong on day two. You know, there was super super solid anglers right the hunt for this thing. You had Justin Largen, Mark Edwards, Eric Siddiqui was right in there. People didn't realize he only had three events too, so he was getting his fourth and he was right there. Yeah, uh, I want to say who else. Uh, there was uh, one other person that was really in the hunt there for the AOI. So now I feel like I'm forgetting him, but um, you said was, the maybe ones not, that I maybe knew I did. Of. Maybe that was it. It was really it in was, the hunt. It was, it was Justin, Mark, you and Eric. Yeah. It's probably one more that I can't think of, but, but I think that realistically I had a chance, probably just those um, for sure. So that's why I went back to that same spot. I was like, Hey, if I can get 
94 and a half. I, I, man, if I can get high 70s, mid 70s, I probably get the AOI, and I think I can do that. So I went back to the same place and uh, was only able to get like 81 inches, and it was a grind, super, super tough. From from one day to the next, it's it's unreal. Like those big fish, I don't think I caught. I think I, a 17 is my biggest fish, and it came later in the day. Mm-hmm. And again, like I said, the shad, they're, they're moving up and down. You had a cold front that came in. You, you just don't know. I don't know what happened to the big females. I don't, I still am just perplexed by it because when you have a day like I had on day one and you fish on the same section, like where do they go? I didn't get one bite. I, I really feel like every fish I caught was a male on day two, not one, one female. And it's like, what, where did they go? The water's clear. I could, I didn't even see one. I didn't see yeah. in the water. Uh, I don't know, man. It's it's why we love this sport. And, honestly, and just talking about us. like the differences, like so, like day one, just to give everybody a few of the numbers. So Druid ninety four and a half, Guillermo at eighty six and a half. You know, uh, top three. You know, Brand Jackson at eighty six and a quarter. So, you know, pretty good days. And then oh, Garrett, Garrett Morgan, ah. he was the other one that was in the hunt. Garrett, yep. I don't think we mentioned him. So Garrett was there. Um, but yeah, all good guys. And they all came back super good on, on day two and really, mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. showed their stuff for sure and had great finishes. So, but then going on day two, you had, you know, nobody broke into the 90s, but Mark did make a hell of a push. He was a yeah, day two did. leader with 89 and a quarter. And then, uh, second place, Brian Nelly with 87, third place, Travis Dawkins with 85. And then it did, it, it just started to taper off. You had a few more all the way down to ninth place in the 80s. And, uh, you know, like you said, you were, you day two was seventh with 81. Guillermo was ninth on uh, day two, so kind of help helped you out as far as you know tournament leader going. Right. But uh, yeah, definitely fell off a, a little bit. But you did you ended you ended it with one seventy five and a half. Guillermo second with one sixty seven and a quarter, and then Christine uh, right behind him with one sixty six and a quarter. Right. So uh, so same spot, same plan, but it, it worked out. So. I did. In your in your day two, you kind of like you said, you knew you know like mid seventies is high seventies is probably got this locked in. So were you happy with your eighty one, or were you kind of stressed thinking that everybody else might be having like a day just turn on for mm-hmm. them? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure. I was, I really wasn't. I knew I had eighty one, which which if ninety four and a half was possible in day one, then somebody can get that on you know day two, and then if Especially I'm eighty one, with- that's you know almost whatever thirteen inches or whatever difference that it's easily doable guillermo or guillermo or christine or whoever say, was right there guillermo and christine have got great history there and then you know, guillermo was knocking on the doors the day one so it's definitely was probably in the back of yeah. your mind for sure it was i wasn't sure but but most of the people around me when i got to the results were kind of like yeah man we think you probably got it and i was like i don't know man we'll we see. won't know until until they announce it you know yeah we'll see so they announce it and you get your first Bassmaster aoi for the kayaks series and yep. you know Filled you full of joy, I'm sure. What was that experience like? If you want to briefly touch on, like, I mean, it's, I it's like you kind of knew you had it locked up. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's I okay. So think about what happened. First of all, at AOI or win, a big win like that, and winning the AOI never really hits you until a day or two later. You know, that, how everyone says that when they win a big, you know, sporting event or whatever. It's true. It doesn't really hit you. And uh, for for me, unfortunately. <laughs> The the protest came in pretty pretty soon. I think it was the next maybe Tuesday morning or Monday like night or something. So like I didn't really have a chance. First of all, I've enjoyed sharing my story here because I haven't had a chance to tell this story and enjoy yeah. and think back on this tournament in Pickwick. It's been such a like sad or so such a range of gloomy. emotions, gloomy yeah. thinking back back about it and instead of joy that instead you know which it should have been you know because you know i went out there and i won the tournament caught the fish and and it was all you know within the rules but i have this looming you know unknown right so i it's the first time i've had a chance to really talk about other than the k the kbn podcast when that one on monday night what happened how i caught him and how much fun it was i just get out there and and go kayak fishing and do what we love you know and so i appreciate you doing it this way and let me have this this time yeah. because it, it was you pretty cool have man. Your moment yeah so yeah you know so we'll, we'll here it is folks we're gonna we'll start to lean into the the crap as he already started to touch on <laughs> so 
you you get your win, not to knock that down. You win Pickwick, so your third event of the year, third win. So you had three firsts and a fourth? Or was it a seventh? Th- a seventh. Th- three seventh. firsts and a seventh, yeah. So Harris three three firsts and a seventh, seventh, which by itself, even if they didn't have an AOI structure, is fantastic. Um, me being an Alabama guy, it's really cool that you did two of those in our state. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so you, 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 you lock up AOI. It's in your head. Like you said, maybe not hit you yet, but first Hobie AOI, first Bassmaster AOI, you're like on a high. Tell me when you first learn about a protest. I think it might've been an email from, from Chris Bowes on Tuesday morning. I think it might've been the next morning. Okay. And, you know, I saw it and, and, you know, at first, of course your heart sinks and you're like protest. Like, what did I do? You know what I mean? What, what in the world are they? Like, oh, is one of my pictures protesting? bad? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's, what's a question here. And then of course the email explains it, you know, th- that the protester, I'm not going to bring up names, but quite frankly, it, if people know or, or whatever, if that's fine, you know, it doesn't really matter because I will compliment this person, the person who protested and anyone who protests any tournament, obviously, unless you're just, you just, doing spiteful. it with m- spiteful and malicious or whatever. But if, but if you see something that somebody's doing that you feel is out of bounds or not within the rules or whatever, you kind of have uh, a, an obligation as an angler to bring that to the tournament director, potentially go all the way to uh, through with the protest. And you're really sticking up for the entire field. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody would move, you know, up a spot right you're sticking some, up for some everybody people don't realize about this because i've i saw so many people like i said I, I stayed away from this as much as i can but in the beginning i did see stuff people like well who protested how many protested you know it like it's a bad thing but like this is what will keep the integrity of our sport yes so like if this was a true like cheating or disqualification thing and it had went by you know and it comes out months later because someone saw you where you weren't supposed to be, if that was the case, but they didn't say anything. It's like that person right. let it happen, and now we've got a tarnished name and a cloud and... over the. Was it legitimate? Was it not? Exactly. You know, and now we we know. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's, don't don't. There's uh, no like, doubt. Like Drew said, don't don't be going after people if you're just spiteful that they're kicking your butt or anything, which was not what this was. Um, I don't know the person, but I mean to do this as formally as it was done. I mean, it was obviously for the right intentions and right reasons and, and yeah, do it. Like if you, if you have a legitimate concern, I mean, especially with these bigger names like Bassmaster and Hobie, they have the people in place to check these things for a reason. If it had been crap, it would have been thrown out immediately, but it we will get into this, but yeah, you know, but continue. Sorry. Yeah. So so mad, you you find out. Yeah. Respect for that person for sure. And uh, told him that, let him know that. And uh, he feels the same way about me. He just, he's got nothing to gain. He just wanted to ensure that everything was on the up and up of this tournament. And uh, I appreciate him doing it, you know, because it's, I feel like it was his duty when when he kind of felt or heard whatever. I don't know how it all kind of like came out or whatever, but basically the whole issue was, you know, was I in water that could be accessed from the main lake? You know, is it clear? Can you get there without getting out of your kayak? Like the rule states from the main lake. And as we already talked about, I determined that on Thursday, pre-fishing. Right. So, so, and I've heard some, some people out there and, and again, I didn't read social media. I haven't been on there cause I'm just, I just don't have time for it. And there's not going to do me any good because, uh, you know, I know the facts and I can explain them right here and everyone can hear them. Uh, and I got a family, I'm just too busy to, to get into it. Right. But, uh, you know, that was the issue. They felt I could not get there without, you know, getting out of my kayak to drag around something. And, it's- and just because just to to just yeah. we haven't said it, the, the issue at hand was there was obstruction. Right. Yeah. And so this person sees that obstruction and they That's say, right. I don't think it's passable. Right. And just we won't get into this yet. We're going to get into it in a little bit. But a lot of the rule and the gray area everybody talks about is it's I mean, maybe it's not passable for you, but maybe it's passable for someone else. You know, it's exactly. You will hey, get pedal, into that pedaling 20 miles, you know, or 15, 20 miles in a Hobie is not doable for me. I couldn't do it in a day, but it is for somebody else. It is yeah. for a young, young guy like Ewing Minor or a Jordan Marshall or a whoever, like someone that's got the legs, Cody Milton to do it, but it's not for me. You know, it's kind of like the Johnson brothers. They want 
Lisa Talmadge, the tournament director for the Elite Series, to let them go to the main Lake Ontario when it's blowing 15 miles an hour because they know their boat setup and their skill set at driving in big waves, five, six footers, is superior to the other anglers. So therefore, they will have those fish to themselves. So be less pressure. Their skill set and their boat setup is designed for that. And there's nothing wrong with wanting and hoping that and seeking that out. Keith Poche sought that out and yeah. his little boat setup got him there. People seek it out with uh, electronics. You know, some people that use live scope and stuff like that, they're trying to get to unpressured fish and find fish that other people cannot do to their setup when they, if they do not have the, it's all the about proper finding an advantage. Yeah. It's, it's all about finding an advantage and the advantage is always good. It's going to be fish that are less pressured that no one else has found yet. And that's yeah. the, and we're all doing it in different ways and there's not a thing wrong with it. It's a, as a matter of fact, we should celebrate that diversity in our sport because that's what makes it special. That's what makes it fun to follow. Can, you know, when the bank, the lake dock skipping guy with the jig compared to the live scoping guy compared to the backwater Creek guy, like they're all kind of clashing. And as you saw in that tournament, you know, a couple guys, I think we're in the back of Creeks, but even, even this style that I won this tournament didn't like just dominate. And not like the whole, you know, feel was way up a Creek somewhere. You know what I mean? It's not like right. that. Not, it's not like any of these strategies or styles dominate our sport. I feel like it's 33%, 33%, 33% pretty much across the board. But the key is there are certain lakes and situations times a year where one has a little bit of an advantage over the other. And if you know when to play those, you just do, do those when you need to do those. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so like no one's, you know, no one's uh say anything about going up in creeks and and being a little small lightweight boat like this in January, February, you know, March, April, whatever, or on Lake St. Clair or Erie or you know, big right bodies of water where it just doesn't play. It's one hundred percent situational. Right, it is. And and no one's you know, and I think it's just cool that we have this diversity. You can do all this. That's what's special about kayak fishing. But anyway, kind of getting off track, but, but it's a good topic to kind of touch on there. Um, yeah. So the obstruction, there was a, there's two things. The water was very low, shallow, low, like I said, clear, not, not a lot of rain. So how can someone get up something that's so shallow, these riffles, there's not really any rapids in that part of like mm -mm. the country right there in these creeks. They're more, I would call them riffles. Um, but they're there and they're not, you know, they're not that hard to get up for someone like me and my setup at all. Uh, the, the Crescent kayak surely, you know, drafts in like three inches of water and, you know, you can, you know, paddle and of course kind of push with your paddle and kind of just kind of work your way up. You know, that's kind of what I was able to do on some of them, but then the logs are the, are the real issue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The logs are an issue. And obviously the fish, this is all, the water is all connected. So the fish kind of move, all throughout so we're obviously in the pickwick lake watershed fishery for sure uh and then the log though could i get you know how can i get past some of these logs that were the evidence which is why i said uh chris bows made the right call with hank weldon to disqualify me because they they had some some visuals they were looking at and again they're not kayak guys you, you know what i mean this is bass master right. they just got into kayak so they don't know what an angler is capable of doing or not doing in a kayak and they and can't I just and the, these pictures, I don't, I don't think they've been like you haven't posted these pictures of these obstructions, no, I, and I don't even know where I got them. Like I know who I got them from, but I don't know where they came from. But the pictures are, I mean, clearly, like if you didn't have any context to it, you're like, right, yep, that's a tree down. Yep, that's a tree down. Um, but I'll let you continue from that. So like it was very obvious at first, right? You know, and they can't. And so so let's say there's a protest and the protesting parties have some, some evidence, evidence that looks, looks pretty bad. Right. You know, but you know, you can't just go in the other angler's word and say, well, Oh, I got around those. You know what I mean? Like you can't also just believe you got to like make a, a, they have to make a call and what they saw, you know, I did have the footage from some of the stuff, but I didn't, I wasn't required to film every bit of my pre-fishing of course. And I, and I didn't, why am I going to waste a whole entire day of GoPro batteries and whatnot but i filmed a lot of this stuff i did so i have you know obviously had that to show them and in actually had this particular log in question during the pre-fishing you know what i mean to even prove prove it then as well that i, I and, and during one of the days of the tournament too mm. but um the log and the main log in question here um there were se several i mean there were definitely several 
But the main one in question that was the most difficult or challenging that looked appeared to be from the outside looking in without my eyes that, that I do this all the time. If you don't go by the root ball of it and you really, I mean like literally go paddle right to it where your bow is touching where you can see there is a, a, a track around that root ball, the clay bank, you know, where the tree had fallen, it's all clay bank. And there is a path about as wide as my kayak of water right there. You know, you don't have to like try to ramp a tree or go fast and get over a tree that way or, or whatever, or, or go under on the other side, some places you could lay down real low and maybe get under. You, you could just paddle around it. So it wasn't even, wasn't even, hard. wasn't even a challenge. It, it wasn't even yeah. a challenge. You just had to know it's there. And, and if you don't have no, the right kayak, the right setup and you go down there, which, you know, the, the, the people that probably took those photos just didn't. I mean, they don't do that kind of fishing. So how would they know to them? That would have been, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. That's the reason I chose that section. This was very intentional because I knew anyone else who went there would have seen those trees. And, and I didn't clear yeah. anything. In pre, I didn't clear anything in pre-fishing because I mean, you're allowed to, like, I didn't clear anything because I just went through it all as it was just God laid it all there naturally. But I didn't on purpose because, um, I wanted my, people to give up and say, <laughs> stop the competition. Right. So it's like, you know, why, why would I do that? So anyway, that's, uh, to me, that was like a positive thing. I said, Oh, great. You know, I can get through and around this with my little kayak and my setup and I'm, I'm in the kayak I'm within the rules. Maybe this will deter some other people and, and these fish will kind of be, you know, left a little bit more for myself and maybe somebody else did find it. I don't know, but, but, um, uh, but that's kind of what happened. Um, uh, and, and then, so yeah, they, they, they had to disqualify me because, but here's what they said. Very clear. Look, man, this is what we've got. Um, if you say you have the footage, I told him I did, and you can prove it. There is an appeal process within 48 hours. We need to know if you would like to appeal this disqualification. And I appealed, obviously I appealed. I said, well, I do have video evidence. I would like to prove it. And then I appealed it. And then it goes through the whole three person panel um, and, uh, yeah, I actually went, I went back again and paddled up the entire thing, uh, from, from the lake upstream 12 miles, left the GoPro running the whole time. Never, never cut it off. Have all that. Was that in. part of your appeal process or it's just something, something they that, asked of you or you just did it just to well, do it? Well, I don't think they can lead you one way or the other because they're not, they're not making the decision. It's the three, mm -hmm. it's the, the neutral jury, so to speak. Right. But I don't think they can really. I mean, they want, they don't want a tournament to be, they don't want to disqualify anybody if, if, you know what I mean? If they didn't break a rule and they can prove it, they, they hope that, you know, that doesn't help anybody. doesn't help them. They just, they're obviously hoping that, okay, please like <laughs> tell me this guy did not break the rule. They, they, they <laughs> do not want that either, but of course I wouldn't think. So they, they did make a comment. Chris Bose said, you know, I wish you lived closer. You know, maybe if, if you could, go back and, and prove it. That would be helpful. I said, well, I've got all my footage. I don't know if I'll have time to do that or can do that. But, um, I looked at my schedule. I saw that the KBFNC was on Kentucky Lake, one lake down. And I knew it would cost me some pre-fishing time in that tournament. Um, I said, well, you know, if this is what it's going to take to clear, clear it completely and make sure I felt like the video I had was probably good enough because it was exactly of the tree two times a tournament day and pre-fishing the exact tree they were saying was impassable. I have video of that already, but I said, you know what, dude, I don't want to leave any doubt. I don't want to look back one day and say, I wish I would have. And, and he mentioned, you know, maybe that would help if you could do that. Uh, but he, you know, but he couldn't really tell me like, Oh, it would definitely clear your name and you'd be declared the winner. If you did it, he didn't know he's not on the three panel, you know, committee. He's just right. He just said it. Now he, maybe. now it's up to, it's up to that committee and that's, it's, it's out of his control. And now, so, uh, but he said, you know, suggested it, it could maybe help. And I said, all right, I'm going to go do that. So I went and did it, paddled upstream, never got out of the kayak, filmed the entire thing, gave him the footage, uh, showed, you know, show what I needed to show, you know, clearly. And they were um, pretty, I think it, I got a call, like I said, five, 10 minutes afterwards, it was pretty unanimous. And, um, and hopefully that uh, just kind of puts, puts this puts whole thing to bed, puts yeah. it to rest and, I just worked really hard, man. I probably could have done it a lot easier. The other, other sections were not as challenging for sure. They didn't have anything like that. They were free and clear, but I thought, well, this is too easy. Other people are probably fishing this pre fished it and they're going to fish it in the tournament. And, uh, so that's kind of why I strategically, strategically chose that particular 
section. So you, you went through the appeal process. The appeal has been overturned. You win, or I'm sorry, the verdict yeah. had been overturned. You get your win. You get your AOI. Everything's yeah. hunky dory. So we're going to, that is put to rest. So now to get to, I would say parts of the drama, which would be interpretation of rules. Sure. And, you know, a lot of talk about rule changes and a lot of input from different people talking about basically what their thoughts on what a tournament legal boundary waters are and why, you know, like if anybody listened to the KBN episode, you know, I think it was Jordan Marshall. Or I can't remember which one of the guests it was Marshall or uh, Jay Wallen going off like the Corps of Engineers definition of a lake. So but we're going to get into all that real quick. So. A lot of this comes down to interpretation of a rule, lack of definitive description of a rule. And, yeah. you know, that's I think that's a big one. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of touch on that. I, I should have pulled up the, the Bassmaster ruling. I kind of understand it and know it. But, you know, the rule with Bassmaster is just the same as the rule with Hobie is you cannot leave the, the kayak to position the boat to better access fishable water. Yeah, make it more accessible, yeah. Exactly. To... On top of that rule, you have for the Bassmaster that eligible water is any water that is connected to the main lake deemed navigable from the body at main lake. It does not say you have to access it from the right. main lake. It has to be possible. Right. So. Which is, yeah, exactly. Which is why fishing the style that, that you know, I like to do, I prefer to do, which exactly. by the way, I, I got to throw this out there. I don't want to like people don't I think people out there feel like uh, uh, sometimes that, well, Drew's a ghost. No one ever sees him. You know what I mean? Like he's just a ghost out there wherever. And that's just not true. You know, I, I launched with 12 people in the Harris chain. I, um, you know, fished on the, the main lake on Grand Lake to win on the main lake pocket. Bass boats were around, you know, they, like I can't be more not doing what I would love to be doing. Right. <laughs> Um, you know, Hobie Wolf and Fox launched with another angler. I see other anglers there and I told them, Hey, y'all mind if I go this direction? Cause I knew I was kind of in the hunt and they're like, you're going where up what, you know, it's like a bunch of islands and stuff. Um, and a lot of fallen trees and logs and they just sit there and watch me go weave right through it. And they were like, wow. You know, like I'm not some like invisible person out there. That's never being seen Lake Champlain. I won uh, and swept the KBF this year and a bass boats could have caught, pretty much air, almost all my fish. There were a few key fish that uh, for sure a bass boat couldn't have gotten to, but a kayak could, which whatever, dude, we're in a kayak fishing we're tournament. Kayak. So, all right. okay, no problem with that. But I'm just saying like people have this sort of like, I think I'm getting some sort of like folklore, like sort of thing where, I, oh, this guy's just a ghost. He's never around. He's always in some backwater. You know, I go with a fish to win or, you know, I prefer to fish that way, but it's just not. I mean, I, I like to possible. fish the same way you do, but I even think of you that way. Like, yeah. like me being somewhat familiar with Smith Lake and then seeing how you did on Smith Lake. I'm like, God, where was he? Like, yeah. And it's not that I'm thinking, oh, what's he up to? Like, right. What, what different county is he in? Nothing like that. It's just like, geez, he's taking it at another level. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with. Okay, so we, we touched on that. It does not say that you have to you have to right. start at the main lake. Our public access, public launch rules allow what, in my opinion, is kayak fishing. Like, yeah, for sure. it, accessing for sure. water on public property in any way we seem we deem necessary. So, yeah. And it, so I, I'm trying to be unbiased. I am with how you did this. If I had seen this on a map google maps now you did the right thing by making sure i probably would have screwed myself over and not done it i look mm -hmm. at it on a map and this would just be my interpretation of a loophole of that rule my interpretation of looking at this access is on a map it's connected there's no man-made features right and it is accessible right i would have went with it from that and by... that would have been my argument yeah so you're, it's accessible you, by said, the launches. Your, your words don't say <laughs> yeah. that I had to prove it. So, what what are your thoughts? So, there's been some people saying that our the access rules should be changed to 
I guess you'd say limited launch, but it'd be like pre-decided launch where basically a tournament director would go through mark all right. possible public access as allowed. What what is your th- your thought on that? And did this tournament Yeah, that's a good change th- your thought. This whole situation change your thought on that at all? Like lean you well, one now way that everyone or knows Yeah, I mean, now that we all know what happened, this there was this isn't a legal launching issue. This never was a legal launching issue. This was a Exactly. Was it accessible from the main lake issue? We've never had a tournament one or even like anyone that cast a check that anyone even ever knows of for, you know, uh, but we also don't know if anybody pulled fish out of a basket. We don't know a ton of things that, that are on the honor system, which can certainly be um, cleared up by, you know, the polygraphs you have to take potentially, right. That are in the rules. You, you also um, media cut. So I had to share my location with Mark Cisneros, the Bassmaster photographer. I, I encourage him to come follow me. I told Dwayne Wally, just so everyone else knows Dwayne Wally, the tournament director for that tournament. I told him where I was fishing before the tournament even started. People don't know these, all these facts. I was so, you know, basically doing everything I could to, as my angler responsibility. Cause you do have a, a lot of responsibility on, in some of these rules, right? Like is your life jacket on all the time? things like that, that could be on you that you, you know, like an honors, there's a lot of rules that are honor sort of like golf, right? There's a lot of rules mm-hmm. that you kind of have to call on yourself too. And if someone sees you and you don't, now you're, now you're potentially a cheater, right? So if someone sees you do this stuff, whatever. But I told, I told Dwayne where I was fishing and he knew the, the cameraman had my location shared. So he was tracking me the whole time in case he wanted to come get photos. And I encouraged him to. So anyway, the, um, I almost lost my train of thought where we're at, but, but this wasn't a, um, it wasn't Except a public launch launching. problem. It wasn't a punch, yeah, public launch issue whatsoever. This had nothing to do with that. So where is the why is that a problem? And in, in this is how we kayak fish on the on the weekends, any day, the same way that bass boat guys launch from bass boat ramps every weekend to 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 go all throughout the whole lake. They start at one spot and they go all throughout the whole lake. But we have a kayak, so we don't have to do that. So we can go launch all these public places. And we've never had anything and the rules ever come up or anyone win or a tournament by breaching that rule. And if, if you ever do or try now that tournaments, these big time tournaments are two days, here's the cool thing. I think Bassmaster will probably be two days next year. All of them. I hope Um, that's what the the rumor is, but Hobie is uh, so, and and KBF, they got the pro series. It's two. And if you do good in, in the first trail series, trust me, you're going to, the media will be covering you or trying to, even if you try some magical way, get away with it. Nobody else saw you or whatever. One day, how are you going to do it when the, when they're covering you the next day, when the cameras, and how are you going to, what are you going to do when the tournament director says, where did you launch? Just flat out lie. And then think that you, there's no tell that you're just going to somehow magically get away with it where they can't tell that. I mean, these guys aren't idiots. Trust me. The guys that run these tournaments have, seen it all and and it goes it goes back to all the technology like you talked about like you're kind of you're kind of pinned you know checking in yeah checking in checking out your 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 fish photograph entries i mean you have to have your location on and it now i mean there's some exactly sometimes there's some issues like uh i talked on it last night with our state championship I knew exactly where a guy was fishing, but I, yeah. every now and then one of his pictures would come in and tell him that, tell me he was sitting next to me four miles away. Like right. that's just sometimes the satellite pings weird, Glitchy. but right. There's but you can never count on that. Part, right. Exactly. You're, we know where you're we, at, you know, you're not getting Tournament directors anything. can call you out very quickly. Yeah. You're not and, getting and again, So this, this wasn't, this wasn't the issue, but it is a question that has came up since this issue that and right. the KBFNC. So, and with this all, I should have said it like this, that the the talk about limited launch and basically it all goes into people like yourself, like myself, Russ, Cody, guys that are able to take what the rule is, all tributaries and any, you know, creeks they're mm-hmm. off of get way away from the lake and the argument for lake anglers and a lot of guys that like to, f- you know, fish the more traditional style of way of doing things say that you're not fishing the same body of water. You're not, you know, I mean, and that's basically the only argument I hear with it. We're, we're not fishing for the same fish. Right. My argument has always been we, we're not supposed to be fishing for the same fish. 
I'm trying to fish from the winning fish to my strength. You're trying to fish for the winning fish to your strength. And it goes back into interpretation. Like, right. Like you were saying, like, like a good example would be John Cox is always going to go smack them on the bank somewhere with very limited electronics. Yeah. And Dustin Connell is going to go out and dominate you yeah. offshore with live scope. Fish. But can either, not, yeah, exactly, but can't can either switch? one do it? Yeah. Can yeah. they do it? Of course. So anybody yeah. who I can go out there in the main lake offshore, which a lot of the biggest bass live in the, like, like Bradley Hallman said on BTL one time, dude, the biggest bass, they live in the dang pond. I mean, that's the truth, dude. There's no doubt about it, but certain times of year can skinny water hold its own. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But, but anyone can like anyone can do any of these options. That's just all of our choices. Like if, so I like, for example, I never like one, one time, uh, and one of the reasons I deter was determined to get better at kayaking. Okay. Kayaking, which is, you know, obviously like the, we're in a kayak. It, so getting better at kayak fishing is, is also, you can get better at kayaking. That'll help you. Right. So one time I saw Eric Jackson, my former employer and, and, and good friend here at Jackson kayak paddle up a class three rapid without getting out. I was like, Oh my Lord. You know what the first thought in my head was Jimmy? Well, I'll tell you what the first thought wasn't. I never once said to myself, I can do that. <laughs> we, no, I, well, at first, I never once said to myself, dude, we got to change these rules. We got to outlaw that. That's not fair. That's not fair because he can, he can do that. And I can't, that's not fair. We need to change that rule. No, you're, you're I never first once like, Damn, that. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I said, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to get better. And I'm going to go get better and be able to do stuff like that. And then I, it's almost like in the Olympics, this is how crazy this sounds. Okay. The point of sport is to push our minds and our bodies. This is sports. This is called a sport to more than humanly think it's possible. It's like the guy that paddled across the Atlantic ocean at 80 something years old, right? People can do way more than we ever realize. And when Sean white goes and gets a snowboard in the Olympics and he does more inverted tricks, three flips in one trick, do they, do they say to Sean white, Hey, listen, bro, we're going to have to cut you at two. We're going to make a new rule for everybody. This guy is too good. Only two two inverted tricks, two flips for everybody now because he's just too good. We we can't we can't be having this. You should never change a rule based on I any single athlete. I never told Tony Hawk he couldn't throw the 900. <laughs> That's right, dude. <laughs> they can't tell everyone to stop like doing that. Like A rule should never be, be ever be based on the fact that somebody, someone's performance is – it, next level it, that should be like we should appreciate those moments and those times in sports where you've got a, a michael jordan he's you know what i mean a rare person a kobe bryant uh, i look up to all those athletes as a kid peyton manning with his study and i see peyton manning more on he wasn't the most athletic guy but he's more like a live scope electronics guy and he dude he would be studying that stuff and he would be so good at his skill set because that's all these bass master tournaments are one everyone's got their strength and they're so good at that strength that they are able to compete almost at any body water, but the best of the best, the best, the wheelers and the Polynix, they actually are good at all of them and they can do all those things and they know when to go where. And if people just kind of can start to figure out some times of the year and some things to do, go when and where, where it might give them a you know, slight advantage. We all have this, the ability. And as a matter of fact, you can't even use, um, cost you know is an issue because the least expensive way to get into the sport is a paddle okay. and, a, and a simple little kayak doesn't matter if it's a 500 dollars you know cheapo whatever like what's cool is now our, our overall you know potential customer base if you're looking at this these entries as a customer is greater but the second you narrow it down to designated launches and stuff like that you've you've literally taken that person away. You can't win now without a motor or a pedal drive, whatever you need in those terms to get, you're never going to win. That's you're going to need these expensive boats. Your customer base just shrunk. Uh, and to me, it's, it, it's against the whole spirit of kayak fishing because the whole point of us having these little lightweight things is to put them in at all different places. And, and that's something you know. I feel like is uh, that the industry seems to be losing. Um, and it's like, I'm not a kayaking purist. Like, I started with a paddle and then I was like, oh, pedals are for losers. And then I tried pedals and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Never have a motor though. And then I tried a motor and was like, damn, this is easy now, you know, but it, it seems like that that is almost like tarnishing every, and I still use a motor. I don't care. 
but I'll yeah. also put it all up and I'll go get out the 60 pound kayak and I'll go do something like you're doing. And I mean, I've hopped my kayak over trees. I'm 220 pounds and I've gotten over giant trees laid over without getting out of the kayak just to see if I could do it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but I feel like that a lot of the competitive kayak fishing world, cause this is what we're talking about is getting away from like what you're saying, what kayak fishing is. You know, I, I saw the definition of kayak fishing getting thrown around. You know, kayak fishing is fishing inside of your kayak. Yes, but it's it's a greater thing. Like, think of when this all started and you're looking at, I mean, love him or hate him. The first videos you were watching when you come in is this Chad on back little rivers and creeks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like Maybe nowhere near as, you know, hardcore to get to like you do. But that's where it was. Right. And now that we've got these national trails and these professional kayak anglers, it's it. I mean, it, to me, it just seems like we're trying to mimic the boat world. Right. And, that's the complete opposite of what we and, should be doing, man, for success. Complete opposite. Dude. Exactly. So many ways I can explain. I, uh, and, I and then, then uh, my so thought wrong. for this, and then I'm, I'll get your your yeah. two cents on it. My my thought is this because I'm I want everyone to enjoy kayak fishing competitively in whatever way you need to, if you don't like competing against guys that are doing this, then maybe one of these series should do restricted rules and all the people that are like-minded for that do it. And then you'll have the best of the best basically fishing against everyone doing the same thing. And then you could have another series where the rules are like, like KBF. I think KBF has like the most loose rules right now, as far as like, traditional kayaking kayak fishing you know maybe they stick to that and then maybe hobie does this and bassmaster does that like what are your i i don't see it as a bad thing because then it's variety you know i don't mm. i don't think kayak fishing needs three major trail series like i'd take like bass mlf flw right why would you have three of the same thing doing the same thing Right. Which MLF they, a little different, but MLF just announced they're doing five fish too. Right. So yeah, they, they did. Why I would, mean, w w would variety and diversity not open it up to more people? And so maybe there's people that aren't fishing the national trail right now that could, because they don't want to fish the main lake. Maybe there's people that are only fishing KBF because the rules are that way. I feel like that it opens it up to more people. If there's a little yeah. bit of variety, but what, what's your For thought sure. on that? But definitely uh i mean they can they can do it if they want whatever i mean and maybe they will maybe they won't but i mean so look at the elite series or major league fishing whenever they launch in these lakes where is their boundary can you like do they have a boundary other than the uh, dam and you can't lock through right downstream and sometimes because i know i know when uh they it. fished when they fished pickwick a few years ago the elites did i know jason lambert was I mean, he talked about it. he he had to fuel up like twice each day because right. he was launching wherever they were launching from. I can't remember, but they were uh, it was Kentucky Lake. Sorry. And they were yeah. coming all the way down. He was locking through in Paris and kept going. Yeah. Like, Sometimes you can. The point is, my point of it is usually most lakes they fish. I mean, other than Mississippi or, or Arkansas River, somewhere that, where there's pools and they give them a limit like this pool to this pool. Um, they, they have they have no boundaries. They have better boundaries than we do right now. They can go further up the creeks than we can go. Now, technically, can they physically get their boat there? No, but they don't limit them on based on water levels, whatever. They can go as far as they want. We, for sure, should be fishing in you know all the water they have in bounds and the water that's only kayak fishable because we are encroaching on their territory. There's already a little bit of a a, a, a kind of a head butting between the the two parties. You know what I mean? They're they're confused why with why would you guys have any boundaries? That's the whole point of why you guys have these. Otherwise, why would you not just be in a boat? It's the best tool for the main lake, but they don't, they don't make, they don't make, make any boundary rules for them. They can go as far as they want. Why? Because the fish all go that up and, and they all utilize that whole ecosystem. That's the whole watershed. That lake isn't that lake without that Creek, that small Creek or that big Creek. It doesn't matter. It's not, it's not the same without it. It's all connected, right? It's all part of that watershed. So if the fish can all move in without there, then what's the problem what would ever be the problem with us fishing there? I, I don't get it. I mean, like, like you said earlier that the elites, you look at the tournaments that were some of the most exciting to watch 
Um, Stetson Blaylock, Winyaw Bay, he stayed close. The other guys ran uh, all the way over into the saltwater up to the Cooper River in Charleston. Long couple hour run, however long it took. I mean, what are these? Who's saying? Well, it's not the same watershed. My lord, on the tournaments we love the most and the sport we love the most in the bass boat world, they let them go wherever they can get to with their boats. You know what I'm saying? Like we're like way far away. And those are the most exciting tournaments. Jason Christie going 60 miles up the, you know, obviously in that situation, the salt, you got to have a boundary somewhere. Like, you know, there's, that's a, a natural estuary. You got to put some boundary, but they didn't. And they let them go wherever, uh, although they could have, I'm sure they had maybe some boundary, but either way, if they chose to go three, four hours of one way, then they're getting like no fishing time. You know what I mean? That's kind of like they're losing their time for that. But anyway, so for the, uh, something I want to, cause I want to try to play yeah. devil's advocate. So, so if you're comparing that to, to kayak fishing, some, something, and I've seen it said something that to point out would be, well, they're all launching from the same place. So, right. Which would basically mean like, like what was brought up. So basically some of the argument was that as a rule change, they should word the rule to where you, you have to access it from the main lake. You can't do like you did and float back in. You'd have to start in the main lake, go up and come back. So what, what would you say about that? Cause I mean, well, here's what from I the saying. boat side, they yeah. have to get in the boat and they have to start right. all together and they go down and come back. Yep. No, I, I like that. So what, what happens on the boat side, one reason they all start together, um, it, it, they love obviously the spectacle that the whole, you know, back in the day it was a helicopter and the, like the TV, the rock music, whatever, just like fly the flyover Media. and the launch. It's, 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 it's NASCAR. It's cool. Okay. That's, that's one thing they, they like that. Okay. We don't have that, but they also did it in, in regular local clubs. They do it to check live wells. Cause they bring their fish back alive. We don't do Very that. True. We don't need to check somebody's, you know, whatever. I mean, because it doesn't, even if we all launch from the same designated launches, if the rules the same and I can't get out of my kayak, then and you can't, we all can't. I'm still going to get to places other people maybe can't because their kayak setup or, or skill set or whatever. And everyone's going to be able to go far away to some spot where someone could still have something hidden, some fish bag or whatever, something hidden, whatever thing you want to dream up that this, people think that's just happening out there and going on. Okay. Whatever you want to imagine that's cheating, that they can still get somewhere where they can do what they need to do to cheat that tournament. Okay. hundred percent doesn't stop that. So why would we change that rule when it doesn't stop it? All it does is make it harder for every one of us now to catch more fish and bigger fish. Why? Because the, the kayak can only go so far away from every kayak launch. That's it, You know, the crowd, more crowded, like people are already complaining about how crowded the launches are now when we're able to launch at all the public access points. They already don't like it. It makes it harder to catch fish. The fish is the star of the show. In all these tournaments, if we catch, if every tournament trail thought about how can we make the anglers uh, catch more fish, okay? If the, if the anglers are catching more fish, they're having more fun. They're any more tournaments. Tourism is happy because more fish are being caught. And we look good as a, as a series. Everybody looks good. The tournament trail, every single person wins. If you think about how can we help the anglers catch more and bigger fish, everybody wins. And launching from designated launches all piled up together that's not helping that at all and it's not solving any of your other problems you think it's solving it's not that's what's frustrating to me and i i'm not gonna i, mean, I don't it, have time i, dude. Like, I gotta i feel to, like it's to gonna like sure some forever, people are but... gonna appreciate it because it would be the people that are wanting this rule but it's like you don't just get your way just yeah. like they don't get their way just like you don't get your way like yeah. it has to be a very you know it's it's a it has to work smoothly for everybody it has to be appealing to everybody you know and the next big one that i the one that so i actually have like a little bit of my own view on it is the distance you know what, what i know right. that you have proposed that you have a formula where you can mm -hmm. i think it's like shoreline miles or something like that you have a formula right. that where you can put a limit around the lake so do you think in the future that it would make sense you'd still get this like the wild side of kayak fishing the what kayak fishing is but say put like a limit you know like 10 miles 20 miles whatever it may right. be i don't know what would be fair because each body of water is different i mean some of them mm -hmm. like if you think of like wheeler lake right here one of its it's got the elk river coming in you have to go like 15 miles before it gets skinny you right. know yeah so you it would be a different set of of 
like boundary mileage. But what, what do you think about that? Do you think that that's a way to try to help make everybody happy? You know, does it I mean, yeah, I mean, kill you... an idea for like, <laughs> I don't know for, for me, I think like, cause we have the complaint even with our locals and it's something I've thought about doing was like, take my time, look at the map for that Lake. And basically I'll take out the ruler and I'll do mm-hmm. 10 miles all the yeah. way around it. What, what do you think? The easiest way to do this is honestly for tournament directors, for everybody, the easiest way to do this. Would we even be having this conversation? Would we would be even be having this protest if the rule was just simply you can get out of your kayak and portage over a man made? I'm getting to that too. I mean, not man, <laughs> a, a natural, not man, a non man made, a natural obstacle because it's in, it's crazy. They fall overnight. You don't know when they're going to fall. All of a sudden, you're in a tournament. It changes all the time, right? I mean, it could it could have happened to you in in that tournament. You floated want, it to make sure it could yeah. have blown hard that night and blocked you out yeah exactly so we don't even have this conversation and all the fish are all connected they're all using that same body water you know and here's the thing i don't know who has a or why and i still don't understand where the problem is because everybody can fish and access all the watershed okay so i don't see where the problem is you know what i'm saying like they can everyone can do if they because there's Unless tournaments are being like the Alabama rig was outlawed because they deemed that tournaments, it's just going to kill the, um, the drama drama or the, uh, the excitement or the diversity of the sport, because it's, it's going to be dominated by one thing. And that is not good. It's like in golf, at some point you've got to regulate the ball and the driver, the length of the driver and all that stuff. Cause if it just gets, it's just all about as far as you can hit it. That's it takes away all the other beautiful aspects of the sport. Until tournaments are being won overwhelmingly in one facet or the other, there's about three different major facets you can talk about. You know, the the bank, you know, on the, on the lakes, right? The the main lake banks, which are getting less pressure these days because of the offshore technology that's crushing it. Uh, which is the second method I'll mention: the the offshore technology and life scope. That's not overwhelmingly winning. It's coming close, darn close, in the bass boat world, right? And then the backwaters and creeks aren't overwhelmingly winning everything either. So it's like until one of these is like the A-Rig where it's just our sports no longer – It's just, you have to do that or you can't win. you got to do that or you're never going to win. And until that the happens, best example because it's the closest because well, live scope yeah, is – Yeah, it is. It's more live scope would be – and, and no, one's, no one that fishes skinny water that wants to throw down $500 on a kayak and get into these tournaments and pay, pay as much in an entry fee almost as their kayak set up, none of – none of those people are sitting there complaining about, that I've heard is complaining about live scope. They just want to go fish and have fun. And if, if, if they outlaw live scope tomorrow or how many, you know, screens you can put on a, a bass boat, it still doesn't diminish anybody who won with 10 screens on their boat today, you know? So, so even if rules change or whatever, it definitely doesn't diminish anybody's successes in the past with those, but I don't see a reason for a change if it's not being dominated by one way or the other. And if you feel like it's being dominated in a certain time of year or certain lakes or certain fisheries, then why don't you just pick up on that and do that, do that style and technique. It's not that hard, but broaden your, like, like when I saw Eric Jackson go up to class two and class three rapid, I said, I'm going to train and learn how to do that. I didn't say we got to outlaw this dude. This is just, this is, isn't right. We need to go and do all of our political pool and find everyone we can to, to rally everyone together and stir people up. This isn't right. No, man, that's not sports. See, I I definitely, I I agree with you on that, man. It just to, to get back to it on the kayak inside of it. It is. I feel like that is what kayak fishing is like. Why not be allowed to, I mean, is it, to, to me, what it seems like is it's because people can't do it or they haven't tried or like you said, they don't have the right setup to it. And I get that. And I still go back to I had this conversation with Dan last night after the show. Like, it, let's say we can't get past this and it goes two ways. Either mm-hmm. all the big trails change their rules and it's, you know, not out of the kayak, a mileage boundary, a common launch boundary, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Let's say it turns that way. Well, then. I think that there is a need for a competition for the other style. Sure. hundred percent. Oh, Oh yeah. 
And then uh, something that I, I, I just mentioned with Dan, if you're at this from a tournament director standpoint, an idea that I would say is, you know, let's say that you, the rules stay roughly the same. The, the bass match, we'll use bass master example. Let's say those rules stay the same. If you want to alleviate some of that problem, and there's a lot that goes into picking bodies of water in areas because you've got chamber mm-hmm. of commerce and money and you have to have space and venue right. and blah, 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 blah. But put a little work into where maybe like a few tournaments of the year play to that late guy where it's going to be really, really hard mm-hmm. to beat one of these like really good. Oh, it happens. Uh, offshore Dude, guys. Look at, look at uh, Lake Fork. Lake yeah. St. Clair, Lake Erie. You, you, you see anybody? Anybody complaining about this, on the this skinny yeah. water style of method then? Nope. You don't see exactly. anybody complain about it. So, like, so why not like split it, it up on purpose to where like you've got, if it's an eight event season, you got four events that are really going to play right. to one type of person and four events that might play to the other type of person mm-hmm. and make it competitive that way. I mean, what's wrong yeah. with saying like, oh, late guy kicked the Creek guy's ass this week. Creek guy kicked late mm-hmm. guy's ass this week. I just, that's the stuff I don't, no, I don't I, know. I feel like we're just getting caught up on some of the stuff that's, Jimmy, I like the way you're thinking, man. I like, uh, and I think I, don't know. I respect the heck out of you, man. You're you're a great host of this show. I love the way you think, and I think that where you're going with this is super smart. And I'll still just go back to, unless this is an A rig, unless life's go, if life's go, like, I don't even get why we're in this conversation at all. The, the tournament director would never have to go find launches, figure them all out. If it's just because here's the deal, I want. I would love for everyone in a Hobie uh, PA 14 or a Titan or a Jackson big rig or a heavy boat. I, I'm, I would love for the, the rule just change where you can get drag over things because then they would be able to get to the places that I love to fish. They'd be able to do it legally in a tournament. And then I'm not trying to keep this, like keep the rule where, Oh, I hope they keep it where I can't get out. So I, I'm like the only one, one of the only few people that I feel like could probably get to some stuff when you would think I, I would be all about that. Right. Cause I know it's an advantage for me, but I'm not because I fell in love with this sport and I was passionate about kayak fishing because of those wild places where bass boats can't get and they're public and we're accessing the public and there's nothing wrong. That's the sport, man. That's where this boat excels. That's what makes it a kayak. I just want more people to be able to fish those waters and enjoy that. I'm one. I would rather, and it's not. It's dangerous. To, the rule, the rule as it is now. I'll be honest with you. I portaged under a log one time in a very fast riffle, uh, rapid, if you want to call it that riffle, because I couldn't get around in this nice little sandbar that that made this little island. And on the other side, I'm in the middle of a rapid and other trees, barbed wire, all because I could not get out. When I can get out on any old Saturday publicly, just drag it right around it. Super easy publicly. It's the way we kayak fish. We've always kayak fished and it was more dangerous than I could have injured myself and gotten seriously hurt. Like I, I, get the argument. That, I don't, I get the argument. Get if that. it's people thinking that it's going to be exploited and it's like, well, this guy is going to go up this Creek and then walk two miles through the woods to a farm pond. Okay. You have assholes and shitty people and everything, and it right. sure it's a possibility, but that's where these GPS pings and it's no I mean, longer connected. Yeah, you could, exactly. You could do that but right if now if you if, if the if rules. You're, if you're going up your creek and there's a log in your way, but you're still going to be on your creek, yeah, and the fish are the going fish under are the log like, from the lake. They go there now. When you come up to a low head dam or anything like that, okay, I get it. Like I get it. Right. There's no way. Those fish don't swim like salmon. They're not running up waterfalls like right. Large mouth, just too lazy, you know. And yep, and it separates it, the ecosystem. It does. So it would it would be not fair. It would be different, completely non connected body of water because shad can't get over that water that dam either. So it's a whole separate. And and then it, just the, the final thing is, I think like you say, you you wish that some of these people would come do this. I what? think that they would probably like enjoy it because i'm sorry nate mayfield north alabama kayak anglers director has always said it best it's fishing for stupid fish and it's easy getting to these areas is the hard part but once you're there it's i mean it can be difficult if you've overfished them or they're pressured or like crystal clear water yes there's difficulties that play but like when i think about taking my daughter who knows nothing about fishing fishing i take her to these places that we're talking about hand her a rod and she catches fish it's if these people that have the issue with it tried it, they might be like, well, damn, I can work a little harder and then I can win a, a bigger check. Yeah, you know? and it, exactly. I don't know. 
It's I'm not, trying like, to be completely like unbiased say, it's, on this. It's just some of the argument to me is just so like, what? Like, but like some of it has legitimacy. Dan, Dan's a late guy. Dan Perry, my co-host. Dan's a late guy. He has a lot of good points that counter my style of fishing. He doesn't want to take the creek guy out of it, but he wants to limit it a little bit. You know, not, and he doesn't even mean not be able to get out of your kayak. His was like, maybe you can't go 30 miles. You know, maybe you can only go 15, you know? And yeah, I feel like that is a, a, a middle ground that we could achieve. But again, yeah. I'm still leaning more towards like, you need to get river bassing back on the map. Well, brother. yeah, <laughs> a lot of people said that. A lot of people said that for sure. I mean, the beautiful story of the Sabine river when Jason Christie won and went 60, 70 miles up that river um, was that they didn't limit what his being able to show off what his boat can do, Very what true. his skill can do. And he found those fish and hit and not everybody else could have done what he did. And he had that technology with his that sink to his garment. He knew exactly how many miles he could go. This is a beautiful story. These are the things that make television. Not everybody sitting out in the middle of a freaking lake and everyone piled in these same launches and they're all, we're all just beating on the same fish or trying to find the same unpressured fish with our electronics or, or whatever. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, that has, that works at times. You got to use that technology to win lots of times, quite frankly, as we know, but those cool other stories and the diversity of our sport is what makes it a good television product. And you got to think about the future of the sport. The future is going to be television and these, the dichotomy between these different styles is what is going to make it special. That's what makes kayak fishing special. And I've written down here a couple notes. Okay. The reason why it's so important that we, you know, keep the kayak and kayak fishing is because uh, if you're a brand out there and I've said this before on podcasts, but the, the founder of hook, he went on business, one of the bass fishing business or business fishing podcasts. One time and I listened to that podcast on one of my drives and he, he said it, I've always known this, but I've never put it this way. He said, the secret to any brand of being successful is you find in any person, if you consider yourself a brand, you find where your God given talents are, where your strengths are. Right. And what you do then, once you know where your uniqueness is, is you go 10 times harder in that direction, 10 times harder to stand out and to make yourself unique and different. And kayak fishing is about being able to get into, you know, skinny water, and shallow water but the uniqueness and what makes us different is the fact that we can go in the dang pacific ocean and catch a tuna or yellowfin or whatever in the atlantic and get whatever you can go anywhere in a kayak there it's unlimiting the boat is unlimiting so to be able to exploit that nature that part of the kayak that's the kayak's brand that's it, its identity to take away its identity and shrink it down to the exact same identity that the bass boat world has in terms of this is kind of the water we can fish now, just where they go. It defeats the entire purpose of the boat. And that's, what's frustrating to me is if we will be successful as a sport, as a whole, if we go and make sure we're, we're highlighting it's, it's what it's, you know, it's uniqueness nature and the ability and, it can do it and, all. And I, I, so, something I'll add to it just real quick is I feel like if, if we make, the, if we take the kayaking out of the sport, I honestly see, I think we fizzle out before. I mean, I don't, I don't think you'll ever lose oh. kayak fishing on like a local level and there'll still be higher level tournaments. But I, I feel like if, if you limit it and you take the wildness out of it, yeah, you know, like you said, the stuff that looks cool on TV could look cool in a good still photo. If you take all that out of it, I, I feel like that. Why would they spend money on it when they already have it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's always been my thought. I, I had high hopes for kayak fishing, but I, I also, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't continue to blow up. I, I could totally see it, mm -hmm. you know, certain decisions made and it fizzle the other direction, you know, but yep. continue with your notes. Well, my other th oh, last thing I have to say is why in the world, if we're even proposing this, I mean, again, I say like, if it's just all open, it's all connected, free flowing. Like you said, you hit a man-made obstruction dam, then it's off. Uh, just let people get out and everybody can easily, easily access all the fish that, because here's the thing, dude, in golf, let's just say golf just has a resurgent blows up. Like it did when Tiger Woods came on the scene. If a sport gets an insane amount of popularity, uh, a lot, most sports that are court based or field based or whatever you want to call it, 
uh, football, you know, golf courses, football fields, if they blow up in popularity, guess what it's real easy to do? Make more golf courses, make more playing fields. It's so easy, more soccer fields, more, any, more ice hockey rinks. It's so easy. You just accommodate, the de- you meet the demand. Fishing has met its demand. We have one place to grow, one place to grow. The kayak is the, the tool that can get us to that one place to grow. And we're trying to stifle that growth. You kidding me, man? Like that just makes me as, as a guy who's kind of helped pioneer this sport for 20 years and put my whole life into this. It just makes me want to throw up, dude, that this is where it's going to take us when nothing has even happened. A tournament's never been won by any of these access, any of these issues whatsoever. It's, yeah. it's just, it's not, it's like, man, it's just, you can tell, man, it gets me like, just, no, I understand it. I, I was, and why do we I have wanted to see it? I wanted why to see ha- your frustration. Like, yeah. And I, and I and just, it, I, it I needs know. to be known like that. A lot of people know that you always have a smile on your face. You're always a cheerful guy. I want people to know that this kind of stuff does stress you out. And I don't, I would like to add and people again, trying to be unbiased. You said it, and people could say you're tooting your own horror about pioneering the sport. It's just like saying that for people that don't want to recognize that. I mean, I don't have anything good or bad to say about Chad Hoover. Kayak fishing gets where it gets because of people like you, Chad, Eric Jackson, you right. know, the the OGs, if you will. Like, I, it, it's not, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I we're kind of like at a point where just like, I'm just exhausted. I, I don't... I want to fight it so bad for the future of our sport, for our kids. I want to fight it so hard, but. Well, I had, I had one you know, final, final question <laughs> that'll help us close it out. So we're, we're out of all the, the, the stressful talk. So let's say that it's, it's two questions with what's happened. Will you change the way you do anything as far as how you fish competitively? And the second question if there are major rule changes, you know, going into next year, do you take yourself out of that? Do you adapt and try to continue or do you focus, you know, more on your kayak designing and right. kind of like you did when you were doing hooked on wild waters? Mm-hmm. And, well, so th- those two questions just, yeah. I mean, so uh, what was the first one again? I've already the, forgotten. The, the, like... the first one is did, did it, <laughs> does what, what has happened change how you're going to approach if, if there's no rule oh, changes, yeah, yeah. does right. it change it? how you approach anything you sure. differently. I'll answer that one first. No, of course not, man. Like I've always said from the very beginning, my message has never wavered. Okay. I got into kayak fishing to fish the wild waters that I love, the river bass. And, you know, everyone knows me as Mr. River Bass and I ran that trail. That's why I got into kayak fishing. And that's actually why I prefer to fish those kind of waters uh, in, in tournaments. If I can, like I said, I've given plenty of examples and I could give so many more Logan Martin, the original Bassmaster. I'm on the main lake. You know, I'm not up at the Coosa River. I was on the main lake. Caddo, when I got second place to Mike Elsie, 2019 National Championship. I'm on the lake. Like, I prefer, though, to not be, to be tucked in somewhere. And it's never going to change. I'm actually fishing those those places in tournaments because it's still about, and it is always should be about having fun. That's why I said every rule should be, you should be thinking as a tournament director, how can we help these anglers have more fun, catch more fish? If that happens... Guess what? They're going to tell their friends. Their friends are going to want to enter. They're going to be positive about the whole sport, the tourism department, the tournament trail. Everybody wins. And then your brand sells, Everybody sells, wins. sells, and that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, there's nobody that loses in that, man. Like, it's nobody. So, and technology is only going to continue to get better to catch all the fish. It's, it's not going to change on the shallow, skinny stuff. It's only going to continue to get better and better on anything that, that, where you need electronic to, to catch them, you know, and it's getting insane what live scope is doing and I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to, when it, <laughs> it's time, I'm going to use it, but I always prefer to be to answer that question. It's not going to change the way I fish one bit because, you know, I, I, obviously as, as we've seen here, you know, I, I do my best to cover every base I can to make sure, you know, with the tournament directors, you know, where I'm fishing, they always ask me where I'm fishing. I'm, I'm up front and I, and I stay within the rules uh, it doesn't mean I'm I'm immune to, you know, I can't make a mistake and unintentionally break a rule. Anybody could, but I am doing my best uh, every single tournament to make sure I'm because all the rule sets are different, which is why I tried let, this past winter. I emailed about 15 of the top anglers to see if we could get a, 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 gr- a list together of all the rules we would love to see joined by the trails. I talked to all the three of the trails individually after we had our list of rules we'd like to see changed and they all 
you know, they had the reasons why the rules, why they didn't want to bend on this or bend on that. And I understand it, but, but it's, it kind of is a bummer. I'd love to see a little bit more on some certain things like the scoring of the fish and how we take the photos and, you know, communicate some tournaments you can call somebody and talk about anything you want and some you can't. And it's like, you're switching between them and it gets complicated anyway, but I'm not going to change my style one bit because I just, it's about fun and I'm going to go have fun at the yeah. tournaments and fish. Hey, the if if I anything, fish. you just know now that be able to prove it, I guess like, Yo, yeah, I mean, you the, sure you can I mean, cause God, need be. I would say if anything, now it's you're kind of under a microscope, like, cause now oh, yeah. people are like, and always have like, been. Yeah. Oh, Always and I feel there. like that's anybody that gets on a winning streak in anything. Sure. Like and I th- Barry Bonds, home run derby. That's oh, right. He's on steroids. Steroids. You know? So and that's why I film it. That's why I film it all. I mean, and like I've said in other, uh, in my other video I posted, like you still have cheating scandals at the highest leagues with the most money, baseball, football. You still have ways that people are going to cheat. Like you guys got to, at some point you got to realize that the tournament directors, knowing where everyone launched and being able to look at it. Like, why do we have far wide is our AOI app. You know, last year was the, the sponsor for the AOI for Hobie and Bass and sorry, and KBF. And it's all about making sure helping you find the, an Onyx, you know, apps like that, the Onyx that people use for hunting a lot and fishing. Why do we have that? If, if we're going to just dumb us back down to the exact water, the boats are on. Like, why do we have Yamaha right waters? As the headline sponsor of the Bassmaster Kayak Series, which is all about fighting for water access. Not at, you think they're fighting for water access on the main lake? Do we need water access on the main lakes with all those beautiful boat ramps? Is the issue with the main lake access? Of course not. And they're the headline <laughs> sponsor of the freaking thing. So yeah. the waters we need to be fishing and that we're fighting for with the Yamaha right waters are all the blue ways that, you know, like the green ways for on water, right? They call them blue ways. All the states and the tourism, they're all promoting – kayaking is blowing up as a uh, – in our society as a healthy and fitness pastime. It's something so positive, just the kayaking aspect of it. And they're creating more and more. They're revitalizing our rivers, cleaning them up, understanding how important that is, right? They're cleaning all that up so that we can you – know, adding public launches and canoe and kayak launches to get more people doing this sport. And Yamaha Rightwaters is fighting for that. So now we're going to take that away from – it just why would we do that that's what we're trying to fight for here it blows my mind man and and anyone who who does say anything about the lake well it's called lake this tournament well dude it's called lake that tournament for every one of those elite series guys that goes and runs from the sabine river up to galveston or makes a you know a long run up some some place that's you know so far away it's no longer in that lake you know we're in rodman oh we're locked and now we're in lake rodman it's not the saint john's river anymore they're in lake rodman so where's your where's your issue with them calling that the saint john's river tournament when they're in rodman reservoir or any other situation that's just like that where they run so far away they're no longer in it no you got to have a name for the the tournament you got to have a name okay it's that lake pickwick watershed you can't say the tournament is called lake pickwick and whatever cypress creek and whatever indian or i don't know name it off all the like the yeah, all the, you can't Indian sit there and say the tournament is yeah bear all whatever uh there's a lot of a lot of uh creeks in there second or whatever you can't just have the tournament name be some big long freaking paragraph did you got to call it something and you know what it's all lake pickwick because every one of those components every little piece of water that's flowing into that watershed it's it all free it flowing and connected to all the fish and the water uh, all of them can go and 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 access you know that's where they live that's their home you got that is Lake Pickwick. That's that's it, and and we don't restrict those elite anglers to going to any portion of that, whatsoever. So anyway, anyone who says something about that, I just I don't know, man. And and then and then to, to calm you back down, your second question: If the rules change, oh, yeah. what do you do? Do you adapt and overcome? Dude, I'm. I, it's all about having fun and ca- and just catching these fish and having fun. I'm not gonna change my style. I'm gonna I'm gonna fish. The, the beauty, of, beauty of our sport, like you said, is we have enough. Okay. I can only fish like, I think this year, maybe 10 or 12 or 12, 13, 14, if you count championships, whatever, probably more than I should be, you know, uh, but I'll probably just, just cherry pick. We got enough trails out there. Just cherry pick the ones that I feel will allow me to have the most fun. You know what I mean? That's why I went to, to a lot of those lakes this year. Grand Lake never fished there. One, I love fishing new water. Why? Because it's fun. 
uh, you know, same with uh, Lewis Smith. Never been there. I wanted to fish it because it was fun. Uh, first time I went to Champlain, I was like, oh, I've heard all about it. I want to go there. I'm just going to keep fishing the places that are fun to me. And, you know, it, it, it maybe if there's a rule change or whatever, I'm, I'm going to go to the ones where the rules allow me to fish in the manner I enjoy fishing. So yeah. it's not just about winning to me and all that stuff. It's about having fun. At the end of the day, I need to be having fun out there. That's why I got into the sport. And it's why I, uh, I continue to love it to, to this day, man. So that's that's the only thing I would change. It's just cherry pick to the side of some the tournaments that I can see would help me have most fun. So for we're, we're going to, we're going to take all the questions out right there. And it, it's been a great talk. I'm glad that you've got to, to give your, your side of everything. So I'm going to do a quick recap for folks. If you're still there, <laughs> drew one was protested. Bassmaster disqualified him uh, based off evidence that they were uh, submitted. He was offered an option to appeal. He appealed. He gave gave evidence. They used his evidence, and I guess a neutral party, to, yeah, a neutral a party, party uh, Three, deemed that he had not uh, been out of bounds, and he was re given the win. I guess I don't even know a correct way to say it, but he won again. <laughs> yeah, re declared the winner. the winner. Yeah, I feel like I had to win that one twice, but um, man, I appreciate you, buddy. I really do. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to hear it here, man. I wanted to hear it from your mouth again. Well, I'm gl I'm glad. Madeline you... Finn, we're we're super biased. I mean, we're we're not we're not biased. We, <laughs> someone's gonna wrong. someone's gonna clip that, buddy. Yeah, that's someone's how it gonna works. cut that. <laughs> I, I can tell you who's gonna clip it too. And Trey, I know you're listening. Don't you do it? Yeah. But uh, you, we're we're not biased. We like to keep it neutral. And we like to let everybody like talk about their own thing and give their own reasons. Yeah. And I'd I'd like to have a follow up show to this. I'd like to have somebody tell me. The opposite side, like right. why they don't like it, you know. I want to hear more yep. of it from the people that have the problem with it. And maybe yeah. I mean, you never know. Maybe someday they it persuades me to be like, you know what, this is wrong. I doubt it, but yeah. I mean, I, and I'll be honest with you, man. I know people know I love to fish this way, and that they feel like, you know, every, I I really feel like I'm not coming at this from a bias either, only because I'm I'm kind of fighting for kayak fishing you know that is the, the name of the sport i'm not i'm not and i'm actually openly saying i did i want people to be able to fish those waters just make it safer and let people get over that stuff easily it's, and then they could and then here's what will happen more people fish that those waters guess what it's not going to be it, it's easy to you know win or even pull off a check if if those skinny waters can't handle that many people so now it, that, that's the beauty of our sport. It keeps, it always ebbs back and forth. Okay. Now electronics come out the very first fish finders. Ooh, offshore. Ooh, there's fish out here. Wow. Everybody's doing this. That's well, a little bit much. Okay. Now this skinny water goes back and wins some man. Okay. This is getting less pressure on the bank. Oh, now live scopes here. This is better. Now more people do that. It crap. So it, it'll always ebb and flow. It's going to, it's going to work itself out guys. We don't need to just constantly change rule after rule after rule. And we don't need just, to knee jerk, on knee jerk reactions when nothing like the Alabama rig uh, or, or is, is taking over. And now we kind of all know the Alabama rig doesn't take over because fish learn quick, but nothing's dominating to the point where you got to make a rule change, embrace the diversity, love the diversity. Most importantly, love, just love each other throughout all this and enjoy the sport before it goes yeah. away. You know? Yeah. I got so, you, man. I, thanks for your time, buddy. Yeah, Appreciate no, I'm, I'm glad to have you on. Uh, congrats also on because we didn't even get to that. We're we're gonna do a show on that with uh, with oh, Russ KBF. and Cody, the KBF, yeah. the national championship. But good show in there, uh, you and uh, oh god, Robert. You know, oh Robert, Weichert, kept the yeah. show ladies in the top five. You know, that good cool. job. It's nice to see him not use his solo skiff. It's mm -hmm. cool. It's a cool rig. I just, it's, it's so funny when he's like, well, took it, but ended up yeah. in the Sholey. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. It was fun. We, and I'll end on this. We, you said something earlier. I don't want to get, give people the wrong impression. It's, it's certainly easier to catch, you know, some fish sometimes in some of these little creeks, but finding winning fish, you know, you're talking about your daughter catching little, whatever, like brim and little small bass, whatever, catching winning fish and finding them in these creeks is not easy. And then even whether you get to some fish that are unpressured, even with live scope out in the main lake or wherever you find fish are unpressured. It's not, it's, it's not, not always, all. it's not always that easy, man. It is not. And it's, uh, it, it's a challenge. It, it really always is. So, you know, 
take that for what it's worth too. It's because lots of people, the reason I say this, because lots of people were fishing in true creeks and rivers in both of these tournaments, Pickwick and in um, uh, the KBFNC. And I know people who didn't get limits in creeks, up creeks. And that's yeah. just, you know what they need to say to themselves? The same thing I did when I saw Eric Jackson go up that class two, three rapid. And you say they don't. They need to say I got to get better and keep learning instead of, you know, being online, you know, wasting time maybe debating all this stuff or doing I don't know, just getting into all the, all this stuff. Maybe they could be spending time just like, I don't know, just getting better, learning more, and, and trying to get better at it. Just instead of saying, oh, we got to change this rule. We got this. This can't. This isn't fair. We got to change this. Just go practice. Keep watching videos. Keep keep learning. You can do it. Anybody can do it. You just got to keep focused. Carl Jakobsen can come from Australia, end up in the elite series and win, not even catching the, a black bass there. They don't have them there and he can learn and get his way all the way there. You can too. So we'll leave that on that positive message, but it's not always easy for sure. When you get to these places. So just to, to get, to give it a fun end, uh, go ahead and ho- hoist your trophy right there and enjoy yeah. it one more time. Thanks man. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm too worn out to really like. To I feel you, dude. As I, as I probably am really inside, and I will eventually one day. So I, I'm going to go back and look at all the pictures of my, my wife and the kids. They they, they had ch- sidewalk chalk. Congrats, AOI winner, Pickwick winner, AOI. All this stuff they they did for me, and to have it all just sink that next day and never be able to enjoy the stuff that they did for me, and it just it's been a crazy, crazy wild uh wild ride. But but it's starting to kind of hopefully some of those good feelings and come back the feelings you should have when you win and you rightfully win work really hard as I did to, to pull it off. Um, they're starting to come back and I appreciate you giving me the time to share that story of how I caught them. Cause that helped me kind of get back to smile a little bit and, and <laughs> some good memories of Pickwick in that tournament instead of, you know, some, some bad ones, that, sinking feelings, but thanks. Buddy. I hear you, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. And you know, from hopefully from as many people can take, go away from this, whatever you can, you know, the air is cleared, hopefully for you. Um, for me, it wasn't really ever not. And again, it's just, I stayed away from the social media and let, let you tell me. So, and then there's, there's all the proof and everything, but I appreciate you coming in and talking. I appreciate, I appreciate everybody coming and hanging out with us for this little bonus episode. Um, you're, you're hearing it here first, you know, from the person that had the issues. So yep. thanks everybody for coming and hanging out and make sure you on this one. I really want everybody to, to like this one up, share this one out, let it yeah. get out there just because the topic's been so hot, you know, maybe yeah, it stirs sure. the topic back up. Hopefully it doesn't. Maybe it puts the topic <laughs> to bed. I know it won't, but thanks uh, for all the support guys. I really do want to say thanks to everyone out there who supported me, whether or not, you know, they knew I, I, they didn't, they didn't know what happened. They were so, everyone was so, kind to me at the KBFNC and everyone supported, supported me. Not, they weren't supporting and they weren't pulling for me to win or lose. They just were supporting me knowing that I needed some, some love and support at that, that moment. Cause it was just a tough position to be in because the rules are, you know, need to be a little bit clarified there. So I want to thank everyone publicly for all your support. Um, and uh, there's one more thing I was going to say, but I can't forget. So I guess it's not, Oh, I was going to say, and also I appreciate the clarification that you let me have because there there definitely was, um, I don't know where it got started or how, and maybe I worded, I, I worded some things poorly on that uh, KBN podcast that maybe for some reason got people thinking that I had not gone through that section and cleared it um, in pre-fishing to be sure. It was 100% clear and I could get there without getting out of my kayak and did so. So that's the one thing I think that, that I heard from most people that, man, I wish you would have just done it before. Like, what are you talking about? Where are you hearing this? Like I did do it before. And that's what I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to come out and say anything. I had to let the process play out and prove with the video, with the text, like I had, you know, where I got picked up and everything. And now without a doubt, everyone knows I did, you know, hundred percent. And, um, Air cleared. That's, <laughs> that's, that's clear. Yeah. So thanks guys. All right. Well, this has been another great episode of the real down. Thanks everybody so much for being with us. Be sure to show us a little bit of love and all of our social medias and all of the platforms that you are listening to this on. And we will see you next week. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on Paddle and Finn. Be sure to drop a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on. 
Be sure to check us out on Waypoint TV, waypointtv.com. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddleandfin. Don't forget to check out the website, paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. If you got a question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddleandfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. You can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures. Your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina, the beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. And Jig Masters Jigs, when in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.